All right, well, my editing skills are crap, but can the same thing be said about Deadpool? Stick around and find out. Bow, bow, oh yeah. Bow, bow, oh yeah. All right, I'm Peter Franson from Spirit Blade Productions and Christian Geek Central, here with my uncut review of Deadpool. All right, well, the IMDb synopsis for this one says a former special forces operative turned mercenary is subjected to a rogue experiment that leaves him with accelerated healing powers, adopting the alter ego Deadpool. What they don't tell you is that this is set in the X-Men Marvel movie universe, and Wade Wilson, who becomes Deadpool, took part in this experiment in order to cure cancer that was surely going to take his life uh, and he had you know had just proposed to his girlfriend so he you know more than ever wants to live for her sake so he goes through this experiment and it gives him powers but it scars his body his face all over horribly so he hopes to now get revenge on the man who did this to him and find a way to repair the scars on his face and body in order to be able to uh, face his girlfriend again. Um, so let's talk about the story, the script, and the pacing. This is an action comedy. Lots of fourth wall breaking. So if you're into that kind of meta type humor, then you, know, you might appreciate what they're doing here. Um, it's a it's a mix of action and then uh, broken up by backstory in flashbacks. His origin isn't at the beginning. It's explored throughout the movie leading up to the climax uh, as, as through a series of flashbacks. Um, I think it could have used more action Although maybe not, maybe what it would have uh, what it would have been great actually, I think, is if the action had felt intense. Um, the light and ridiculous tone of the whole thing, plus the lack of definitive power limitations for the villain, whose powers, you know, he said that you know his powers were that he had enhanced dexterity and he couldn't feel pain, but yet he's suffering injuries that I'm like, dude, whether you feel that or not, your body would stop functioning. How are you surviving from this? How are you healing? I don't remember him saying anything about having a healing ability. So getting a sense of his limitations uh, was really difficult. And in the end, I just couldn't. And so I had no idea like how close Deadpool was to ever winning. So I didn't know like, oh, he's almost got him. He's almost got him. I'm, you know, I'm just kind of like watching stuff happen. And, and I don't know how to anticipate anything and so therefore I don't anticipate anything with any level of uh, of intensity. So the result for me was uh, the action is all eye candy with no intensity. I mean if, 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 you're, if you're down with that like you know you like the Transformer movies although even like a typical Transformer movie probably has a few more moments of intensity than this one did. Um, the, the jokes worked for many in my audience. If you've been watching my videos for a little while you know I have a very specific and narrow sense of weird humor uh, and so most movies that other people find funny I don't find funny so you know I'm not ready to knock this one for its humor because a good amount of people in the audience were laughing at it but I would say that that none of them laughed hard or for very long uh, and I laughed only rarely just you know a few chuckles here and there the the humor is largely from spoofing action and superhero movie cliches but they did that in a way that felt done already like I couldn't pinpoint I was like I feel like I've seen this aspect of action in superhero movies spoofed before, referenced before, joked about before elsewhere. And I couldn't tell you right now where. Maybe it was one of the kick-ass movies. Maybe it was in just some random comedy that had a moment where they were spoofing an action slash superhero type of trope. You know, I, I couldn't, but I, I couldn't pinpoint it. But I just felt like, yeah, I feel like none of this is really shocking me or doing anything new to spoof the genre. I wish they'd capitalized more on the X-Men movie universe setting, as it seems intended for this movie to exist in uh, but but maybe not then again because Colossus of the X-Men the guy that's you know covered head to toe he can cover himself in like metal was a character in this movie but we've seen him in the X-Men movies before the problem was not only was the character design different just visually he looked more like the comic book version of Colossus he looked more comic booky in a sense but he had a thick Russian accent and the version of Colossus we've seen in the movies so far in my experience unless I'm forgetting something was a younger guy who definitely did not have a Russian accent. Now, technically, maybe they never called that guy in the X-Men movies Colossus, but I mean, you know, we're all watching this and comic book fans look at that guy and go, yeah, that's Colossus, you know, so... <clears throat> so I was confused at this Russian, this thick Russian accent that he suddenly had in this movie, uh, in addition to the, to the alternate uh, design. And then there was... Uh, the only other mutant was this young mutant girl with this crazy long funny name that we've never seen before in any of the X-Men movies. Now, both of these characters... Uh, are 
called X-Men. They're referencing the X-Men constantly. They want Den Deadpool to join the X-Men. Professor X is referenced. We visit the mansion a couple times. Hugh Jackman is referenced and Wolverine is referenced. You know, both the movie star Hugh Jackman is referenced very subtly and Wolverine mentioned by name. Um, but there's nothing else. Uh, there's no meaningful cameos. You don't see any actors from other X-Men movies appearing here um, other than photos of Hugh Jackman, you know? So, uh, and, and they referenced this, you know, uh, like if I give away one punchline, you know, Deadpool says, you know, it's funny how you guys are the only ones that I see at the mansion ever. Um, it's almost like the studio couldn't uh, afford any other X-Men or something like that, you know? And, uh, you know, that, that got a little chuckle and a laugh in the theater, but I'm thinking to myself... Uh, or any X-Men. I'm not even sure these guys are X-Men because I've, I've not seen them in any other movies. You know, it just, it, it, it was just a bummer, you know. Uh, if, they, if, if there's not going to be dramatic tension in a movie like this, which I felt like they were going for maybe a little bit, I think they did try to give him a backstory and, you know, and make him a, a kind of a tragic guy that you could root for a little bit. But, I mean, they didn't, you know, it's mostly an action comedy. And so they, you know, they just didn't give the time and probably weren't planning to give the time to that, you know. So uh, it was almost like giving lip service to his kind of tragic background because they broke through it with humor so much. They broke it up with humor so much. But, you know, if there's not going to be dramatic tension, I wish they would have cut loose more and get like a numerous who's who of cameo characters from X-Men movies played by the actors that play them in those movies that Deadpool in this movie can, you know, screw with or give commentary for of some kind. I think that's what makes Deadpool unique and interesting as he's spoofing superheroes is that he's tied to a specific universe that we're already familiar with and he turns that universe on its head as he interacts with it. Um, so the Deadpool version of the X-Men universe is what I would really love to see. Maybe we'll get that next time. Uh, instead, they cut loose more with the uh, locker room humor, which maybe is part of the comic. I, I don't know, but uh, I I've, I've not read the, the comic. I've seen a few pages here and there. Um, but uh, but it still felt like they were you know trying to prove how daring and rated R they could be, you know. Uh, I saw a few articles before watching this movie that said they're really earning their rated R, you know, their, their R rating. And I'm like, okay, well, I mean, just make it good and interesting and don't just set out to earn your R rating. And in some instances, uh, in terms of like the dialogue, the jokes, and also some, uh, some of the uh, scenes of nudity, which I'll mention in a little bit, uh, it felt like nothing more than we're earning our R. Yeah, we're hardcore. We're an R superhero movie in the Marvel Universe, you know. And it didn't feel motivated by really anything more than that. Um, now, as far as the cast and the performances, um, I'm not a fan of Ryan Reynolds. Uh, I think I discovered that with this movie, and I was thinking back, I was like, you know, I don't think I've ever really laughed hard or really laughed consistently throughout a Ryan Reynolds movie ever. Um, and I think your enjoyment of this movie might hinge on whether or not you find Ryan Reynolds funny. You know, for me, I noticed that he snaps into this kind of smart aleck mode with his face and his voice as he leads up to punchlines, which makes them unsurprising. I, I can tell just a moment before he gets to a punchline, oh, he's going to be funny. He thinks he's going to be funny now. And I like to be caught off guard more. Um, and I also find most smart Alec humor to feel kind of arrogant and a turn off. Like, he's the one guy who's got the world figured out. Oh, yeah, I'm going to, you know. So that's not really my thing most of the time. Um, the stunts and visuals, uh, there's lots of action, both practical and CG stunts. Colossus is an entirely CG character, and the movie acknowledges this. However, for me, that doesn't fix the problem of seeing constantly that this is a CG character. Uh, as far as music and sound, I'll just kind of support what I said before. Uh, with uh, I think the music choices uh, support what I said before, that uh, the pop music tracks that are used to like spoof movie cliches, you know, <coughs> tracks that you've seen in other action movies when they're doing a slow motion walk, they use here. But I was like, I think that's been used, yes, in an action movie to spoof the slow motion bad boy walk. But then I've also think I've seen a movie that's used that track again to spoof it. And so we're kind of late to the spoofing game with this particular music track. So I wish they would have pulled from other music sources maybe or, you know. Anyway, it's funny. I couldn't put my finger on it. But I was like, I just feel like we've been here before somewhere else. Um, as far as like, you know, relevance, is there any like moral, philosophical, spiritual issues in this in this movie that uh, that might come to mind as a result of watching it? I don't think so. I don't think there are any that like would be intended. Um... And I think what came to my mind will probably not come to many other people's minds at all, if anybody. Uh, and but 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 I'll tell you that uh, you know just kind of getting meta for a moment, I guess, in the spirit of of the movie, I saw what I think is a double standard in the script regarding sexuality in movies. Uh, Wade slash Deadpool tells his girlfriend as he's first meeting her that he wants to get to know the real her, not just the sex object version peddled by Hollywood. He says. 
And yet a few moments later, her body is peddled as a sex object in a sex montage with brief yet graphic nudity. And later, a brief walk through a strip club two-dimensionally peddles the objectified bodies of multiple women. Uh, neither of these instances required nudity to tell the story or to establish the setting. And several, several other moments could have incorporated nudity but didn't. There's one example where, you know, Colossus is fighting this woman and in the midst of the fight she kind of has a wardrobe malfunction revealing her left breast to Colossus but the audience doesn't see it because his hand is obstructing it in the shot. Um, and I kind of thought to myself, well, that's an interesting inconsistency. They've already got the R rating. They're not peppering it all over the movie, all over the movie with nudity, as some movies do, and still get away with an R rating. They could have easily put, you know, you know, her breast in there in the camera. Why didn't they do that here? And I wondered. I wondered maybe what's going on with the actress there. Maybe she didn't want to do that. You know, I suspect that there's a struggle within Hollywood itself regarding nudity and female objectification. You know, uh, with the I, I think there's uh, one camp. Sometimes it feels like the same voices that are that are you know saying yeah f female nudity you know and sex scenes and stuff that's about empowering women and stuff and, and they're own taking ownership of their sexuality. You know, but at the same time you'll commonly see young actresses uh, that are nude early in their careers stop doing scenes with nudity when they become a name later on. Huh, I wonder why that is. Um, commentaries will often have actors mentioning the difficulty and embarrassment in doing sex scenes. Uh, they seem to recognize that their bodies are special things that shouldn't be shared with everyone. There's something weird about doing this. Um, and I'm not saying that, you know, feeling uh, it should be our guide for what is right and wrong, but I just think this is interesting to observe that many of them seem to feel this way. Um, yet they do these scenes anyway, uh, often I suspect because of pressure from those that they work for or self-pressure to advance their career. I even know of one instance, I can't remember the movie now, but it was a commentary uh, that I, I think I listened to not long ago where an actress was a young actress, not a name, was kind of surprised on the set on that day she didn't know she was actually going to have to be nude for the scene no one had told her until the day of shooting. Hmm. That's a little suspicious to me. Um, <clears throat> so there's a few actresses that I I've seen in interviews that have said doing scenes like this, you know, shows that a woman owns the power of her sexuality or whatever, or that it's an arts form somehow. But that kind of talk always strikes me as words of a woman that's that's trying to convince herself or maybe has convinced herself a while ago not to be ashamed of giving away something precious to numerous strangers. Um, anyway, this movie probably won't bring these thoughts to mind for, for many other folks, but it, it's what came to my mind while watching it. Now, if uh, I don't know what your tastes are in movies, so I'll just talk to myself as if I'm a time traveler. I'd go back in time. I'd... Pater. Ugh. Skip it. Skip it. Watch the trailer for the sequel. See if it uh, involves more of the X-Men movie universe and maybe some more daring and crazy fourth wall breaking. They're, they don't go near far enough in this. Instead, they try to be daring in other ways. Uh, in the meantime, this isn't one that, that you need to see. Um, so that's it. Uh, I'd love to get your take on this movie if you ended up seeing it. Um, and uh, you can support this channel if you want by going to spiritblade.com and seeing what we have for you there and also liking, sharing, and subscribing uh, right here. Uh, and then I hope that you'll visit boom christiangeekcentral.com as we continue to geek out. I don't have the button ready. And seek the truth.